Good morning everyone and welcome to another video on Mr. Ong Math Lesson. In today's video, we are going to look at the question 3 of the NCA Probability Concepts uh, questions and we shall, if you have not watched question 1 and 2, they are available in the other videos I have done previously. So let's go. So now, Let's read the question. Research has shown that artificial tanning is detrimental to health. The exogram shows a representation of the proportion of a group of male and female students who have participated in the artificial tanning program during the previous period year. So this is the bar graph. So the tanning is in dark color and non-tanning is in lighter color. So the female, this is the graph and the male is uh, the tanning and non-tanning. So now they have, they told you that there are 250 students in the study of whom 55.2 were female, just less than half of the students had participated in artificial tanning during the previous years, including two-fifths of the male. So now we are going to the first question in the internal, external is that they are going to ask you how to draw a table. So represent the information using the two-way table. So there are two categories, male and female, and then tanning or no tanning. So what we did, we did a two by two table. So we're going to put in number. So you know that there are 250 students, so 250 students here. So the total is 250. And then we are going to calculate the uh, uh, females because they say 55.2% uh, were female, so 55, 0 0.552 times 250 of the student population, 138, so that will be the female. So, <coughs> to, excuse me, to get the male, you just take 250 minus 138 will give you 112. So far, so good. We're going to fill in the box now. The next one, they say just less than half, 48.4 of the student partic participated in the artificial tanning. So, 0 0.484 multiplied by 250, 1 to 1, and they are total tanning 1 to 1. So the other 129 has not participated because 250 minus 1 to 1 is 129. Okay, the next important part is this. Okay, two fifth of the males has participated. So there are 112 males, so two fifth of the male, so two fifth times 112, that gives you 45, and we are going to do that. So once you get this table, we are going to fill in the rest of the table. Okay, so if the total is 112 and there are 45 tanning, so 112 minus 45 will give you 67. That's how you fill in the box. Next, 1 to 1, 10, and male 45 to get a number of female who 10, 121 minus 45 will give you 76. And the last box here, to get this box, you can either add these two numbers to get 129 or these two numbers to get 138. So we decide to do this one. 138 minus 76 will give you 62. That is how we fill out the box. And that, if you can do that, that will give you an achieve. Not too bad, right? Okay, we shall come back to the table later. So we are going to look at the next part. The next part, explain what can be learned from this data about the potential relationship between gender and tanning for the participation in the study. So we are looking for gender and tanning. So we are looking at tanning for male, tanning given for female, uh, tanning given for male. So remember, this is conditional probability. So this formula is given in the booklet. Please remember them because every question, merit or excellent, is always a conditional probability. So probability of A given B is always A and B divide by probability of B. So now they ask you, calculate the probability of tanning given female. So tanning and female, look at that. So A and B. So tanning and female divide by the last column in probability of female. So now we look at the table. So tanning and female and female. So we look at the table. Tanning, female. Uh, tanning and female. So tanning and female, 76 out of 250. So we get 76 over 250. And probability of female is 138 over 250. So that's how we get that number. So when you divide them, the 250 will cancel out. You'll get 76 over 138. And the answer is 0 0.5507. Similarly, if you want to find the conditional probability of 
tanning given the male. You take tanning and male, divide by male. So we look at the table again. Tanning and male is going to be 45 out of 250. So 45 out of 250. And then male is 112 out of 250. And then we are going to cancel out the 250. You get 45 over 112. And the answer is 0 0.4018. So generally, female has a higher percentage uh, number. So females are more likely to have participated in tanning than males because the number is 0 0.5507 compared to 0 0.418. Not too bad, right? Okay, that is a merit, by the way. And now we are going to do the next part, okay? So we have calculated this number before. So they ask you a claim that female are uh, 1.5 times likely to participate in artificial tanning compared to male. Does this support the data? And you need to answer with appropriate statistical statement. So we have found earlier probability of tanning given female is 0 0.5507. Probability of tanning given male is 0 0.4018. You just divide them and the answer is 1.371. So this number is different from what they claim 1.5. So we can conclude that data does not support the claim that the females are 1.5 times more likely to tan as the ratio shows that it's only 1.371 which is a lot less than 1.5. If you can answer the part 1, part 2, part 3 of this question, you will get an excellence. Not too bad, right? Yes, good. Now we will proceed. Okay, the next question is based on a table again. So we shall read down. There are a total of 250, so total is 250. We have added up the total, so what we did is that the row total this plus this will give 112, this plus this give 138, the column total this plus this is 149, this and this will give you 101. So this time we talk about male and female, ear piercing and no ear piercing, okay? So it summarized in this table. So explain whether the event student is female and student and ear piercing are independent so again independent event you have to remember this formula probability of a and b is equal to probability of a times probability of b and this can be found in your booklet okay so if your a is your female b is your piercing so you calculate probability of female and piercing so female and piercing is going to be 91 so 91 out of 250, that is how you get 0 0.364. Then you need to calculate the probability of A, which is probably of female. So female is going to be 138 over 250, that is 0 0.552. And the next part, B, probability of B, which is your student has ear piercing. So ear piercing is 149 out of 250, and the answer is 0 0.596. So again, if that is equal to that, so you need to multiply uh, this number with that number, so we multiply them, uh, that will give you 0 0.329 and the first, this part is going to be 0 0.364. If they are the same, they are uh, independent. If they are not the same, they are not independent. In this case, these two numbers are different, so we can claim that the two events are not independent and that will give you a merit. Got it? Great. Now we shall do the last question. The last question is an excellence question. So we shall go and tackle it now. Okay. Three male students are randomly chosen from this group. Okay. We look at the table again. So uh, probability that males have ear piercing. So males have ear piercing is going to be 58 out of 112 because we are talking about male. So 58 out of 112. And uh, those who do not have a ear piercing is going to be 54 out of 112. So the probability is given there. So males with ear piercing is 58 over 112. And male without ear piercing is 54 over 112. The question asks you, calculate the probability that two or more, so it could be two or three of the three males have ear piercing. So two or more, there are three males, so it could be two or three. So the first thing we did, we're going to calculate all three males have ear piercing. So what we did, the piercing has 58 over 112. If the first person, the first male is taken out, then you are left with 111. So the next chance, the probability is going to be 57 over 111. And the third person is going to be 56 over 110 because another person has been taken out 
of the equation. So you multiply them together and the probability is 0 0.31354. That is when all three males have ear piercing. What happened if two? Two males have ear piercing to three, so you have to calculate the first male has a ear piercing, the second male has ear piercing, and the third male has no ear piercing. So we calculate 58 over 112 have ear piercing. If he's taken out, so the next person is 57 over 111, and no ear piercing is 54 over 110 because another male has been taken out. So that's how you calculate uh, the first two have ear piercing and the third one has no. Similarly, we're going to do the the second one has no ear piercing. The first and third person has ear piercing. So 58 over 112, 54 over 111, and 57 over 110. And the last condition is no ear piercing, 54 over 112. And the last two has ear piercing. So 58 over 11 because one male has taken out, 57 over 110. And you calculate the probability, you add them up together, if 0.3916. So finally, the last thing you have to say, probability that two or more have ear piercing, you add these two numbers together, what well, we did that, and the answer is 0 0.5270. And the last part they ask you is, uh, support your answer with statistical statement and reasoning, include a discussion on assumption, okay? So, the first thing you need to know that the presence of ear piercing for each male is independent. So, the ear piercing for one male should not affect the ear piercing for the other male. So that is what is meant by independent. And the last thing we need to know, sampling without replacement is used. It means that once a male is taken out, uh, you cannot reselect the male. That's why the number gets smaller each time. So if the first one, the 112 male, the next person is going to be 111 and so forth. So it's the same for all the calculation. So that is how we have tackled question 3. Hopefully, you go and watch question 1, question 2 in my previous video. If you can do that again and again and again, you should be able to get an excellence in this paper. And good luck in your exam. Cheers, everyone, and have a good day.